So welcome to March. It's four o'clock and it's still light enough to film. <sighs> so finish it February actually went surprisingly well. I finished three things and I was able to move along two other, two or three other projects that had sort of been languishing for a little bit. And so to say it was my first time doing it, I think it was quite successful. And so to reward myself for such a successful finish it February, I've cast on a new project <laughs> and it's this one. It's been on my list for a while. From this book, The Shetland Trader by Gudrun Johnson, and this is book three in little series. And the one I am making is, it's been in my queue for a long time, Maywick. And it's a sort of chevron retro. It's got a little bit of a 40s feel, this sort of pattern. And apparently this is quite a traditional pattern with this zigzag. And I used this pattern before razor shell they call it for the tara shawl which i also made from this book however stash busting it's never easy i don't have enough yarn to do the color work the way they have it in their instructions i have lots of odds and ends of shetland wool that i've collected over the years from various fair isle projects and the like and so instead i'm sort of having to th rather than have like their main color be one shade of yarn i'm having it be the main colour is blue, and then all my different shades of blue that I've got, and indeed green, because I don't have enough blue, will be the main colour, that sort of thing. I've just sat here and figured it all out to make sure I have enough yarn. But I'm so nervous about this. <laughs> what I'm actually doing... I've already cast on a movie magic, isn't it? I'm knitting the, the sleeves two at a time, and the body at the same time. And using my interchangeable needles, I'm taking the needles off the cable once I'm done with one colour and reattaching it. And <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a palaver, but I'm hoping this way will actually be less stressful than having to rip back or do keep having to refigure out how much I've got left and keep having to weigh everything. It is quite fiddly to keep changing over the interchangeable needles. I suppose I could just use three separate sets, but I don't have three separate sets, so. And naturally with this uh, Shetland yarn, despite all this color work and having had to weave in and sew in a whole load of ends for that patchwork jumper in February, to do another color work jumper straight afterwards. However, this one being the Shetland yarn, you can do the spit slice method. So that's what I'm doing as well. So I'm having to knit the entire round, change the interchangeable needles and then unpick a bit to be able to do the spit slice. It's going to be quite an involved project this one. And I don't think it's gonna use up a vast weight quantity of yarn if you like but I think it will use up lots of odds and ends so that I will have more room in my box and I can move a lot of things into the used up category and Ravelry which I'm finding very satisfying. I also thought it'd be nice to have a bit of a change. I've done quite a few 1940s projects in a row now or sort of very vintage projects and this one knitting in the round a bit more contemporary. It's still sort of 1970s so it is still a vintage knitting project. Just that little bit more modern. <laughs> So welcome back to Stash Busting. Uh, it's been quite a long time. So long that I had to um, go back and watch my own video. It also took me ages to find my little notebook, so uh, that was a waste of energy. But I think the only footage I filmed in March was about the Maywick that I'm working on from this book, The Shetland Trader Volume 3. Looks like this. And I have continued, over the past couple of months, I've picked it up and down because I was doing this thing with the interchangeable needles where I had to keep swapping them round. It made it really fiddly and I just haven't been able to get into the flow of it. 
and I'm now up to the point where I'm about to join the separate sleeves and the body to do the yoke. So it will hopefully whip along from now. However, I have uh, several issues with it at this point. So because it's knitted in the round, you can see it's, it's biasing pretty badly. It's on the wonk, basically. These should be vertical lines. And when you sort of pull it straight, it, um, nope, they're diagonal lines. Um, I don't know whether that's just the nature of it and it will block out fine. But at the same time, I've been really frustrated actually. It's not the first time I've noticed this about a pom-pom pattern. They give you the gauge after blocking, which, I mean, you can kind of block your gauge to be whatever you like, do you know what I mean? I need to know what it is before blocking as well because it says at this point my sleeves should be 31 centimeters and they're not, they're 27. So that's four centimeters short. So I've been a bit of a loss what to do because as well with this pattern repeat, should I knit extra rows? Will that throw the pattern out when I join it together? I haven't been thrilled with this pattern. I don't know whether it's just because I am so used to single size vintage patterns that like the structure of the pattern, you know, four size one, four size two, do this. And then like, it'll be like, redo this pattern repeat. But then for my size, it will just be a dash number of times. So I'm like, so I just read this whole chunk of text, which has got nothing to do with the size I'm making. Okay, great. So I just have to ignore all of that and go on to the next step. I'm finding it really confusing. So what I've decided to do is something that I've learned from Roxanne Richardson, which is I'm going to take it off. Well, I'm probably going to leave it on my interchangeable cables and I'm going to block them now before I carry on. Um, and that way, hopefully I will know whether I can, it will grow to be the right length, but also it's, they're quite snug, these sleeves as they are. So this, this should be the underarm. And like in their, their bracelet length sleeves in the design and mine barely reach the elbow. They're all so, so snug and it's Shetland wool and they're kind of itchy and I'm a bit like, am I ever gonna wear this jumper? But then I can't unravel it because I've spliced all the edges together and all these stripes. So I couldn't reclaim the yarn if I frogged it, even if I wanted to, unless I used it for some weird, wacky other stripe project. So, there's a big question mark hanging over this one just now. It needs blocking and we'll see where we are. So that's a little update on that one. I've still got quite a lot of Shetland wool left in my bag, so I could always just do extra rows, but nothing finished there, so nothing to take off the stash busting total. So the other things that I was working on over the past couple of months have been my Victorian things to go to the Victorian ball in Bath. And you may remember my big Victorian shawl you might notice it doesn't have a border. <laughs> In the end, I did just have to cast off and leave it as it was, but not for want of trying. I tried so many different ways to get a border that I liked. I originally bought this cone of blue yarn. You might remember me talking about it. I also then bought another five balls of yarn to try and make a stripe pattern out of. Unfortunately, always the dilemma when ordering online, although this for Knit Picks palettes, I had a shade card. And so that's why I went for this particular yarn because I knew I had the shade card to look at. And yet it just didn't work. I tried and tried. I tried the original pattern with the stripe sequence that it suggested. And then I tried a different one just using this color. I think part of the issue is this is a very yellow off-white, as you can see, I've got my white bedding and my white top on. It's incredibly warm yellow. And a lot of these are quite cool colors and they just didn't go with it. And like I had like I had these ideas about, oh yeah, the Victorians did have bright colors. I want to use bright colors, but it just didn't work. That was even the thing, the dress I ended up wearing this shawl with, my day dress, was a very cool pale pink and then I had this very yellow shawl so it didn't even really go with the dress. But I did wear it and I am glad I made it but of course that now means I have five balls of wool to add to my total. So we were at 152.5, add five for the shawl which I uh, haven't used and we're up to 157.5. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these. I don't really think all of them go together. I know lots of people like pink and red together as a combination, but I don't. So maybe these all become hats. Maybe this is like Christmas gifts I knit for people or something. 
I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. This colour is called Victoriana and I quite like it. So I might like, I might try this for a different Victorian pattern. But they're so difficult to figure out with the yarns and the yarn quantities and all of that. So maybe I'll um, ask some of my fellow vintage knitters, Victorian knitters, if they have any suggestions for 50 grams of four ply. That's not all the yarn I've bought. I kind of fell off the bandwagon of stash busting here quite drastically. Although to be fair, I had promised ages ago to knit a friend of mine a hat for their birthday and they're really into space and so I didn't really have anything in my stash that was right for like a sort of cool modern beanie hat you know my yarns tend to skew vintage historical so I went and I bought some hand dyed yarn this is called Death Wish by Dye Candy. I mean, they were really pleased with the hat. I was really pleased with the hat. I took one photo of it. I was knitting right up to the day before their birthday. So um, I got a quick picture of it. But this was 100 grams and I've used some of it. I haven't weighed it yet to see how much it is. So 100 grams is two balls of wool. So let's add two, bringing us back up to 159.5. Thankfully, I'll go downstairs in a minute, get the scales out and see how much I've actually got left. This will probably get incorporated into my Hexipuff quilt, which is another one of those things that I've been plodding along with. You might remember previously, I was like, oh, I don't really know where I'm going with this Hexipuff quilt. Should I carry on? It's, it's so much work. How enthusiastic am I about it? So what I did for inspiration was I looked at um, fabric quilts, hexagon patchwork quilts for inspiration. And I actually came up with something which has made me feel a lot better about it. And I am making my hexi puffs into little like flower quilt blocks. And I haven't decided whether I'm just going to attach them all together like this and sort of nestle them together. Or if I want to do just like plain white ones, once I've sort of used up my hand dyes, whether I want to buy some generic white yarn and do a sort of white board around them and then join them together or whether I just stack them and then I can almost do sort of quilt as you go and I'm really pleased with this idea and I've got more one of the other things I hadn't anticipated was I'd forgotten that I'm making my hexi puffs at a different gauge and as a result they're turning out bigger so when it says like you'll need 500 of these to make a double or whatever a queen size quilt whatever it calls it i will need fewer because mine are much bigger uh, i tried making one at the at the original gauge and it was it was minuscule so that makes me feel a bit happier and even just having laid out the ones i've already got i'm i'm a good way there to a quilt or like a bed topper or something so i've been plodding along i've got quite a few of these now and you know i was a bit nervous about the kind of colors because a lot of the colors are not the sort of thing that I would necessarily like for my bedroom but and that's why maybe I thought it might be nice to have a sort of neutral to tie it all together because you know what I mean I've got all these extremes <laughs> but we'll see and it sort of has renewed my enthusiasm for it and it's also one of the things I often do when a project feels really overwhelming is break it down into chunks and so now like knitting six of these to go round another to make another quilt block has is, is much more achievable than say knitting 500 of these you know so that's how i'm sort of managing it and i think actually this yarn having looked at it with these other two that i've got yeah and now i feel them tied together oh it's going to be so squishy and warm 30 degrees this week in june in britain but um come the winter i think i'll really love this Will I get it done by this winter? Probably not. At least I have a decision about this. I do want to carry on doing it. I am still just going to use my hand dyed yarns and see where I am. If it takes me 10 years to finish it, it takes me 10 years to finish it. But because I'm taking this quilt as you go approach, it can just grow. You know, I can add to it as and when. So that's the Hexi Puff quilt. What I need to do is figure out how much I've used because the Hexi Puff Quilt is one of the only projects where I'm counting the wool out of the stash as I use it um, rather than when it's finished because like I say it's going to be finished in approximately 10 years. But I do have another finished object to show you and this one was a bit of a last minute experiment for the ball. It was a lot of fun. These are Victorian kneecaps. It's one of those patterns, if you've ever looked at a Victorian knitting manual, there's often a pattern, often more than one, 
for kneecaps and it's kind of this garment that didn't really make any sense to me why would you need a kneecap what is the purpose of it? This is, they're often described as like anti-rheumatic. I have a lot of interest in um, the artistic and dress reform movements at the end of the 19th century where they had lots of kind of misguided ideas. I mean, some of them are more near the mark in terms of modern medicine than others about wearing wool and why it was healthy and keeping warm, you know, absorbing sweat away from the skin, all that sort of thing. They knew it was good for them, they just kind of the logic as to why was a bit weird. So kneecaps is one of those. Now, as I was going to this ball and I, as a disabled person who lives with chronic pain, I often have methods to cope with things if I know I'm going to have to do a lot of standing up, do a lot of walking. And I wear uh, support socks and I often wear knee supports as well. And I sort of had this idea about, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I sort of tried out the historically accurate knee supports at the ball to see if it made any difference? So I found some appropriate yarn in my stash and I looked up a pattern that was appropriate for the 1840s and I ended up using one from the Workwoman's Guide, which if you are a historical sewer is well known for being this incredible resource for 1830s sewing and garment construction. There's a whole chapter on knitting too. So I delved into this knitting chapter for the first time and looked at some patterns. That's actually where the um, second border pattern for the shawl I tried came from as well, which didn't work. But the kneecaps were more successful. I had a little bit of an issue with gauge. Typical Victorian pattern doesn't tell you what weight, needle size. It's like use appropriate wool and appropriate needles for that wool. Okay, so I sort of estimated based on my measurements what sort of and the number of stitches. So I used a double knit weight wool but that meant, whereas my sort of stitch gauge was about right to cover this part of the knee, the number of rows it wanted me to do, I had to half. <laughs> so I think actually this was probably in a lighter wool and it was supposed to be skinnier. And I did try them out. Here's a picture of me wearing them. Uh, at first I put them over my modern knee supports just as a sort of like decorative touch. So warm, oh my goodness, so, so hot. And I think I suddenly realised, you know, why they were worn. I did also have some questions about are they worn under stockings, over stockings? And so as far as I can tell, to me, this sort of became... So, you know, ballerinas wear leg warmers, right? And it's kind of a stereotype, but it's the reason they wear leg warmers is to keep their ankles warm and supple to prevent injury. I also know from having worked backstage on productions with dancers and ballerinas, they love the temperature of the sort of backstage area to be as hot as possible, that they stay warm, the muscles stay supple and they don't injure themselves. And so I can understand why if you did have knee problems, knee injuries, arthritis in your knees or whatever in the Victorian era, why keeping them warm would sort of provide some kind of relief, particularly when I realised Victorian stockings tend to only come up to below the knee. And then if you've got drawers that sort of come just beneath the knee, there is a draft that comes up the leg of the drawers. And so having a little warmer to cover that bit up. Yeah, no, I, I could understand it. So it was a very interesting kind of little uh, living history experiment, if you like. I would like to try different types of pattern because this one was knit this way round and I've seen other ones that are knit sort of like a sock top to bottom. So I'd like to try some other patterns for this again and sort of see how the patterns develop. But it was a fun little experiment and it used up, I think, two balls of wool. I do have some of this left over and I have to dig it out. Can't find it, can I? And see just how much I have left over. But it's I've used at least 100 grams. So speaking of projects for the Victorian ball, I did I mean, it was a completely unrealistic project. It was never going to happen in time for the ball. But because I was looking at this workwoman's guide for 1830s stuff or 1840s stuff for the ball, I came across a very early stocking pattern. And I'd seen sort of late Victorian stocking patterns and they're constructed very much like the 1940s stockings that I made were. But this early pattern made no sense to me. <laughs> it was all about squares and making it the breadth, making it out of squares. And so you knit for the breadth of the stocking down and then you start decreasing and all this sort of stuff. So I thought I would give it a go. The pattern said you required coarse yarn and needles. However, the stitch count for a lady's size stocking 
was 127. I instead went for my two ply lace weight yarn because I have a big cone of it and I thought, well, let's just give it a go. And that looks more appropriate in terms of size for a sort of over the knees kind of stocking or, because it is supposed to be over the knee. Uh, it describes, you know, knitting the square to the bend of the knee. But this is how many rows I've ended up doing. And now I have to shape for the heel. That's the length probably up to my knee, but not over the knee. I took this one on my holiday with me because I quite like knitting two ply in hot weather because it's not so warm. It's also light, so easy to pack and travel. I've got this very severe sort of angle of decreases for the calf as well. And there were lots of kind of contradictory things in this pattern as well. So this one's really an experiment basically, but I've stopped here because I have to do a shaped common heel, which is the kind of heel you see on a lot of early stockings. I don't know if you've been following along with Roxanne's Richardson stocking and sock project, uh, but I have and I'm fascinated, which is part of the reason why I was motivated to work on this one. But I've never done this sort of shaped common heel before and I need to look up how to do it before I give it a go because typically the instructions in the Victorian pattern are like, work the heel in the usual manner. Okay, but it has used, I, I wound off a little bit from that cone, well, quite a lot from that cone to take with me when I went away. So it's probably only used a couple of grams really, isn't it? Because it's so lightweight, but we'll see when I finish it. Don't know if I'll make another one, but it's a nice experiment. And I'm sort of collecting these Victorian experimental projects just to try them out. And you know, they don't have to fit anything. It doesn't matter. They're just for my reference and hopefully your interest too. So the last thing, I have cast on another project last night and that's purely because I need to block that Shetland one and, and I needed something to knit while I was catching up on the sewing bee. And I have these cones of cotton, which I bought years ago when I just got back into knitting and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and I had a pattern, a vintage pattern I wanted to make that called for two ply. And I went online and looked for two ply yarn and I was like, oh yeah, cotton, that'll be fine. And it came up and it was sort of like this mercerized cotton and I was like it's not really right for a cardigan so it's sat in my stash for ages and I haven't known what to do with it one of the casualties of the washing machine last year when I got the moths was my buddlier blouse uh, I found this vintage pattern in my stash and I graded it up and I made it available for free on Ravelry so link in the description if you're interested uh, but then yeah my version of that got shrunk quite drastically and now looks like this. So what I thought I would do with this cotton is actually make a cotton version of this because the instructions do say two ply wool or cotton and it's kind of a summery sort of top. Thought it would make quite a nice use of this red cotton as well with the, with the flowers on it. So I made a start last night and I went wrong. <laughs> so I had to unpick right the way back to the moss stitch border. So I'm only this far, but I think I'm gonna continue working on this as a sort of summer project and if my Maywick turns into a disaster and I sort of have to abandon it because I can't even look at it, at least I'll have something else to carry on knitting. I mean I have lots of other works in progress I could be working on but uh, never mind. I think that's you up to date. Let's go and weigh everything and see where we are in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm.